cat person, dog lover, is your iguana, hamster, or other wonderful four-legged friend the best in the world? You're not alone. A recent study estimated that more than 70% of U.S. households own a pet. That equates to over 90 million households. About half of older people in the United States have a pet. Besides being adorable and potentially our best non-judgmental best friends, what impact do pets have on well-being and brain health? Here we review some research to find out. suggests that pet ownership is linked to many beneficial health outcomes. This includes things like cardiovascular health, loneliness, depression. Studies have shown that there are physiological changes that occur <laughs> when people pet animals. There's a drop in heart rate, it can decrease blood pressure, and it can reduce stress overall. <laughs> right, Victory. Having a pet can have lots of different impacts in terms of how your brain is functioning. It can reduce a stress hormone called cortisol. It can increase oxytocin, prolactin, and norepinephrine. These are hormones related to joy, nurturing, and relaxation. Pets encourage exercise and help combat obesity. Psychologically, pets provide unconditional love and acceptance. Research suggests that older adults lead happier, longer lives when they interact with pets on a regular basis. Caring for animals also gives older adults purpose and a reason to get up in the morning. Pets even enhance the socialness of our lives. One, they're wonderful companions on their own, but when you're out for a walk, there's a reason that you can talk to other dog owners or people who like your dog. Or when you're having conversations with people in general, pets make great conversation topics. But what about brain functioning? This is a newer and very important area of research because it could help guide not only a family's decision on should we have a pet for our older adult loved one? Should we put in the time and energy and effort to help our loved ones sustain and maintain pet ownership? But also for larger scale programs that might be able to assist and support older people in having getting or maintaining a pet. Let's dig into three different studies that try to answer this question. First, let's look at a cross-sectional study that asked whether or not pet ownership was related to a difference in cognitive functioning and brain structure. Let's start with Ian McDonough and his colleagues at the University of Alabama. Within the context of the Alabama Brain Study on Risk for Dementia, they looked at this question. They examined almost 100 community dwelling people up to the age of 74. The people underwent brain MRI, comprehensive health assessment, and neuropsych testing. They found clear support for a relationship between pet ownership and overall brain health and cognitive functioning. This was strongest for dog owners in compared to people who didn't have any pets, but second strongest for overall pet ownership compared to people who are not pet owners. On neuropsych testing, the most consistent and strong relationships were seen in processing speed, in attentional orienting. So something in your environment cues you to pay attention and do something else. For example, you're walking your dog, you see a cat nearby and you tighten your grip on the leash. So paying attention to the environment. And episodic memory for stories, like being able to tell an adventure that you and your cat had the other day. On brain imaging, brain volume was bigger in dorsal attention, limbic, and default mode networks. When looked at together, those networks relate to form systems that are linked to attention and memory. Two things that are incredibly important as we age, paying attention to our environment and remembering what has happened. Now, let's look at limitations. This is cross-sectional data. They looked at a slice in time, what is happening here and how does it relate to what is happening here? That doesn't allow us to see cause. Does one thing cause the other? While their hypothesis was that pet ownership 
related to repeat and sustained specific activities that then led to strengthening of those abilities in the brain doesn't mean that we know that pet ownership actually caused those processes. What if instead of pet ownership makes our brain work better, maybe people with better brains have pets? There's evidence for both within this study, but one reason out of several that the authors cite that they think that pet ownership actually leads the other direction is that when they statistically controlled for overall brain functioning, the relationship remained. So whether or not people had problems in terms of brain functioning, there was still a relationship between pet ownership and better brain functioning. So let's move forward to a population-based study. Could sustained pet ownership relate to better cognitive functioning for older adults? Jennifer Applebaum from the University of Florida and several of her colleagues asked this question. They used data from over 1,300 people in the health and retirement study who were aged 50 and above. This is data that was collected between the span of 2010 and 2016. And they compared groups of people who had owned a pet for longer than five years, people who had owned a pet for less than five years, and people who weren't pet owners. The participants underwent repeated measures of cognitive functioning over time. People who were aged 65 and older who had owned a pet for more than five years showed better verbal memory compared to people who didn't own a pet. Again, this wasn't the type of study that we could determine outright causation, but the authors gave several ideas as to why they think they saw this relationship over time. One is oxytocin. This is a neuropeptide that's made in the hypothalamus, and it's related to things like bonding with infants or bonding with loved ones in general. It's also been shown to impact social cognition and memory encoding in humans. Another potential reason for the relationship they saw in this study was that they saw indicators of greater physical activity. For example, lower BMI and lower incidence of diabetes and high blood pressure. This is consistent with other research suggesting that pet owners tend to be healthier than non-pet owners. They also hypothesize that this could be impacting the link between stress and cognition as there's a growing literature linking cumulative stress to onset of Alzheimer's disease and other forms of dementia. They believe that this may buffer physiological responses like heart rate, blood pressure, and cardiovascular reactivity. The final study we'll look at is the Baltimore Longitudinal Study on Aging, and they wanted to know would pet ownership impact executive functions? They followed over 600 people aged 50 to 100 who were generally healthy, community-dwelling older adults. The people were followed between 1 and 13 years and assessed every 1 to 4 years. They looked to see what changed with age, and one of the things that naturally did decline with age was executive functions. For example, what they measured was multitasking. What was interesting about this study was that when they looked at deterioration over time, it was less severe for people with pets as compared to people who didn't have pets. When they looked specifically at the breakdown between dog owners and cat owners and non-pet owners in general, they found that the contrast between dog owners and no pets at all really made a difference. The contrast between cat owners and no pets at all was not statistically significant. And within the dog realm, the people who walked their dogs experienced less deterioration than people who didn't walk their dog. This doesn't mean go trade in your cat for the newest dog model, but it does mean that overall pet ownership is helpful and that the physical exercise associated with pet ownership might be especially beneficial. Pet ownership appears to be linked to positive outcomes in several ways. So for those of you who are on the fence about owning pets yourself or supporting and facilitating your older adult loved ones in having them, I'd encourage you to consider the idea. There are also resources that can assist you and your loved ones in having pets. One resource for senior citizens in the United States who are interested in having and maintaining their pet is the Meals on Wheels Loves Pets grant program. This supports Meals on Wheels programs nationwide to help older adults be able to keep their pets. 
There's also financial aid and other assistance available in organizations small and large across the United States and likely in other countries as well. For example, the Humane Society of the United States provides a list of state-by-state -state resources that provide assistance to older people or other underserved populations. I'll put a link to that in the section below. So pets, not only are they wonderful, not only has little Victory the kitten been sitting in my lap this entire time, I'm so sorry to wake you up, little buddy. <laughs> they bring something to our lives. Yes. They probably make our bodies work better. Yes, they probably make our brain work better. But overall, they're just wonderful. So I consider oh, joining forces in whatever way possible to give pets homes and to reap the rewards of what they bring. Thanks for coming. Big shake.